It's a design with a twist, something we like to call a garden bench with opposing views. Two seats and a table, all in one neat little package. It's unique, detailed, fun to build, and useful. So whether you have a gorgeous view of the mountains off to the east, or a stunning view of the ocean off to the west, either way, this garden bench with opposing views has you covered. The thing I really like about this project is that we can get it done in basically four steps. The frame, the back, the seat, and the legs. And each step is really customizable so you can make this exactly what you want it to be. We're using pressure treated southern pine lumber to build the bench. That way it can withstand whatever mother nature throws at it without worrying about insect attack or rot. The frame is made from a 10 foot length of 5 quarter inch deck board and an 8 foot length of the same material. To start, square off one edge of both of the boards and then rip them both to three and a half inches wide. Next, cut two lengths to six feet long and from the remaining material, five pieces to 14 inches long each. Lay the six footers on your workbench and make marks at two, three, and four feet. Measure and mark in from each edge one half inch. Then drill pilot and countersink holes at each mark. Clamp the braces in place at each location and be sure the frame is square. Then drill pilot holes in the braces. This will help prevent the end grain from splitting. Then install two inch deck screws in each hole. To finish the frame, sand any high spots at the joints. All right, next up we're gonna make the back, the supports really, and they are ripped from a piece of one by six. We've ripped them down to three and three quarter inches. This is what they turn into when they're all finished. Here's how we do it. Cut four lengths of one by six to 28 inches long, then rip them to three and three quarter inches wide. Mark a 20 degree angle at each end of the piece, starting at the corners. To create the notches that will fit around the base, use a square to draw a perpendicular line from the obtuse angle and measuring three and a half inches long. Then draw another short line at 90 degrees at the end of that line. At the top of the support, draw another right angle at three and a half inches in. Then use a miter saw to cut the angles from the ends. Cut the notches using a jigsaw. When they're done, you should have two sets of supports. Each pair needs to be identical, so you may want to consider gang cutting them. Clamp each set of supports in place and use a square to make sure they sit perpendicular to the frame. Mark the locations for four screws. They should be roughly an inch from each edge. Then drill pilot and countersink holes at those marks. Clamp the supports against the frame and install the screws. Sight along the front edges of the supports to make sure they're even with each other and make any adjustments necessary. Then measure and cut a piece of one by to fit between the back support and the front edge of the frame. This will not only provide additional support to the back, but it's needed to keep the leg spacing correct in the next step. You know what this means? It means I changed my mind a lot when I was making the legs on this project. As a matter of fact, in the prototype, I actually used balusters from some decking that I had left over. I like them, they just weren't quite as beefy as uh, what I was looking for. In the end, this is the model that won out and here's how we make them. Cut four lengths of two by four to 20 inches long. Then make a 20 degree cut at each end, the same angle we used on the back supports. Next, measure five inches down along one side and make a mark. 
Then from the opposite edge, measure in two and three quarter inches and draw a line from point to point. This will give the leg a nice taper from top to bottom. Use a jigsaw or a tapering jig on the table saw to make the cut. Finally, to give the legs a little style, I used a beading bit on the router table. Create the bead along the edge we just tapered. Use a clamp to hold the leg in position inside the frame, aligning the top edge of the leg with the top edge of the frame. The leg should be snug against the long side of the frame as well for extra lateral support. Now drill two quarter inch holes through the frame and leg and secure them with galvanized carriage bolts. Once you've installed all four legs, set the bench on the ground for the next step. All right, now we can move on to the slat work for both the back and the seat. Now the seat is made up of 10 of these, one by six, cut to 17 and a half inches long. Once you've cut the 10 slats to 17 and a half inches long, mark six of them with the locations for four screws. They should be positioned an inch and a quarter from each end and one inch in from each side. Drill pilot and countersink holes at the four locations. Then use a roundover bit on the edges of the six slats to soften them up a bit. Then measure in from the end of the bench 12 inches and mark both the front and back of the frame. Center the first slat on these marks and use a scrap of 3 quarter inch wood to ensure the slat overhangs front and back evenly. Clamp the slat in place and drill pilot holes into the frame, then install screws into each hole. Install the adjacent slats in the same way, clamping them in place as you go. For the slat closest to the table section, measure and mark the location of the back support. Cut the section out using the table saw or jigsaw. Next, measure and rip the slat so that it wraps around the support about a half an inch. Mark and drill two pilot and countersink holes along the front edge and one at the rear. Then use the roundover bit along the edges. Then install the slat using screws, glue, and finish nails where necessary. The last slat is installed the same way, but ripped so that it overhangs the end of the bench about three quarters of an inch. Simply repeat these steps for the other end of the bench. The back is made up of 10 of these. This is another piece of one by six, cut to 25 inches long, but then ripped in half. Once you've cut all 10 blanks, use the router to add the bead along both edges. And to round over each end. We'll install five slats on each end of the bench. Use a piece of one by six as a spacer, laying it on the seat and against the back supports. Glue and nail the first slat, aligning the ends with the edges of the seat. A scrap of three quarter inch wood gives us the correct spacing between slats. Once the back slats are installed, it's time for the last step. That brings us to our bonus step, the table section of our bench. Now, sure, we could have just continued the slats from the seat all across here and made it nice and uniform, but why make it simple, right? We used some scraps of the prototype here that we built. We laid them on a diagonal and uh, it's got varying widths of wood here, but if you want to make it really uniform and yet different somehow, try this. The table is created using six varying lengths cut from one by six stock. 
Begin with the corner pieces by cutting two wedges using the entire width of the 1x6. The long edge should be about 10 and 5 8 inches. Install the wedges at the corners of the table using glue and finish nails. Align them with the edges of the seats for a smooth transition. Next, measure and cut the second set of strips. The shorter edge should measure the same as the long edge of the first pieces installed. Glue and nail them into place, then measure the remaining width to be filled. Divide this measurement in half and rip two lengths to fit. Cut two 45 degree angles at each end to align with the front and side of the table and install. It's also a perfect place to kick back and enjoy a great book. For detailed instructions on the finish we gave our bench, visit bradstags.com and check out realoutdoorliving.com for more great projects using wood. It's real.